Hello everyone, so in this lesson we are going to talk about electronegativity. If we had a bond, so let's say for example we are bonding hydrogen and fluorine. So we've looked at how to do this in the previous lessons. So we know that hydrogen is in group 1, so it's got one electron, whereas fluorine is over here in group 7, so it's going to eventually have seven electrons surrounding it like that. Then it's pretty easy to bond this. This electron will bond with that lone electron and so we end up with the following. And so there we have it over there. Now electronegativity deals with this bonding pair over here. That is a pair of electrons. One of them came from hydrogen and one of them came from fluorine. But between hydrogen and fluorine, one of those wants electrons more than the other. If you look on the periodic table, if you see here, it says electronegativity and it shows you that it's this number. So these numbers that are written vertically like this, these are your electronegativity numbers. So hydrogen has an electronegativity number of 2.1, whereas fluorine has an electronegativity number of 4. What that means is that fluorine attracts the electrons more than hydrogen. So the higher the electronegativity number, the more that atom attracts the electrons. And so in real life, those electrons are actually going to be closer to the fluorine. So it's going to be something like that. So the definition of electronegativity is the following. Electronegativity is the tendency of an atom to attract the electrons in a bond. Now remember, this is very close to the official definition, but please use the definitions that your teacher give you. Okay, so it's the tendency of an atom to attract the electrons in a bond. So we're going to take this a little bit further now. So what this means is that because fluorine is attracting these electrons very close to it, it means that the fluorine is going to become slightly negative. Because remember, electrons are negative. So we show that slightly negative with this funny symbol like this and we put a little minus over there. And so because the hydrogen, the, the electrons are moving away from hydrogen, hydrogen is going to end up becoming more positive. And so now what your teacher might show you in class is that the electrons are moving more towards the fluorine and so they'll show you an arrow like that. And sometimes they put a line through it like that. Now that arrow is showing you the direction of where the electrons are going. Now we're going to go a little bit further because we've got a hydrogen which is positive and a fluorine which is negative, we have two different parts. We have a positive part and a negative part. So if you think about the Earth, you've got a North Pole and a South Pole. Now hear what I said. I said North Pole and South Pole. And so when you have a molecule that has a negative and a positive like this, we call it a polar molecule. See, and there we can see that word polar again, pole over there. And then one last thing, you know in physics when if you have a, let's say you have a force of three newtons like this and two newtons like that, then what would the net force be? Well, well done if you said that the net force is going to be one newton to the right. Net means overall. So this molecule has a net dipole moment. So I know I've thrown a lot of different words at you, but don't worry, for the next lesson or two, I will keep explaining this so that you become very familiar with it. So let's just go over that again. Electronegativity is a number that tells you whether something likes electrons or, or, or tells you how much it likes the electrons. So if we took fluor I mean hydrogen and fluorine, we can see that fluorine's number is 4 whereas hydrogen is 2.1. So that means that fluorine wants the electrons more. Because of that, because fluorine attracts the electrons more, it causes fluorine to become slightly negative and it causes the hydrogen to become slightly positive. So now we have a positive and a negative side, which is the same as having a north and a south, and so we can call it a polar molecule. We can then use an arrow to show the direction that the electrons are going. And then we can say that this molecule does have a net dipole moment. That's the same as saying that it has a net force. 
That's all I'm going to explain in this lesson. We'll practice this in the next lesson.